Hello, and welcome to A Dominican Way. I'm Mae Puccio, and our guest today is Father Lawrence Frizel, originally from Canada, and now chairperson of Judeo, his, Judeo excuse me, Catholic Studies, Christian Studies at Seton Hall University. Welcome, Father. Good Thank to you have very you much, Mae. Well, you know, in the world of spiritual moguls, we have a big one here. He's not going to want to hear that from me, but I have to toss that out because I'm so very impressed with his uh, dedication, his vocational calling both to his priesthood and also to the Jewish people. Uh, Father, give us some insight into your early beginnings because that's always so interesting and key to people. <laughs> mm. Well, uh, I was born in Calgary, Alberta, and I grew up in rural communities in Alberta and British Columbia. And for a number of years, I was a student in a one-room school for eight grades. My mother was the school teacher. And so uh, we had uh, a simple life, uh, rigorous in some ways, because uh, uh, all of the details of survival, like cutting wood, cutting wood for the fires, uh, uh, picking berries all summer and planting a big garden so that we'd wow. have food for the winter oh. and so on. And you mentioned about your father was ill. What happened to oh. him? Well, father? Uh, my father had arthritis, oh. and it came, uh, there came a point when I was 11 years old that he could no longer work. So my mother had been a teacher, so she went back to the classroom, and uh, my dad took over the household duties. He was a good cook and wow. baker and so on. So, uh, so we... We provided for most things ourselves in terms of the needs of daily life. Uh, didn't go, there were no supermarkets or anything like that in those days. So in my childhood, we usually lived quite far from a church, and therefore I would see the priest on Sunday morning in the vestments that set the priest apart from the community, and the uh, awe-inspiring work that the priest did was overwhelming as far as I was concerned. So God started speaking to your well, heart very young? Well, slowly, I had the opportunity in high school to go to a Catholic school. Oh. Uh -huh. and, uh, and in that context, I uh, learned more about the work of the priesthood and the possibility that an ordinary person could aspire to be a priest. And did someone start grooming you at an early age in high school? Well, I saw the dedication and well, the possible vocation. Uh, oh, well, I guess the, some of the sisters were certainly very interested. Uh, I uh, didn't want to be told what to do. Uh, I wanted to work out things for myself. And so uh, I wasn't going to announce to everybody when I was in the 11th grade that I wanted to be a priest. Uh, so there was a bit of a, of a struggle. The priests in the parish were uh, very helpful, but uh, they didn't do anything to push me. So I finally made up my mind and uh, went to the seminary after I finished. 12th grade, and I studied philosophy for two years, and then went to the University of Ottawa in Ontario, where I did my theology. Now, it was in that context that I was able to specialize in sacred scripture, because as a Catholic in rural communities where there were many devout Protestant uh, uh, people who did, thought that the Catholics didn't have a Bible, the Catholics uh, were... Uh, not informed about Jesus, I wanted to be able to uh, communicate with them uh, uh, the perspectives of our faith experience. Well, that makes you uh, a very strong visionary in my mind because at that point in time, um, yes, um, it wasn't as, as fully developed our love of scripture and our studying of scripture, so you knew that this would eventually come about. So you were ready. Well, I was... Uh, uh -huh. I you was, were ready pre-Vatican II a long uh, oh, way yes. ago. <laughs> well, I was wanting to prepare, certainly, yes, yes. for uh, the work of the church as... Uh, as a priest, I'd always discussed whether I, when I was a teenager, whether I wanted to be a priest or a teacher. And so uh, after I was ordained, I was taught in the seminary. And then I had the opportunity in 1964 to go to Israel to study Hebrew in an immigrant school. How did that come about? What were the well, beginnings of that? Well, I wanted to... I knew that if I wanted to specialize in sacred scripture, I had to... Uh, improve on my knowledge of both Hebrew and Greek. And so uh, the immigrant school was the context to learn Hebrew as a living language. 
not just the study texts and oh, so on. And that's uh, how I uh, took that initiative. And there, of course, I met Jewish people for the first time uh, and met large numbers of Jewish people. I think you, I remember you telling me at one point in Canada, uh, you didn't have any Jewish people where you were. No, we yeah, were in very rural, very rural yeah. communities. So in Israel, uh, 1964, the Second Vatican Council was already underway, initiated by Pope John XXIII of blessed memory. And the way in which we uh, could work toward the specialization in sacred scripture was to gain a deeper knowledge of the languages. And then uh, I went to Rome for two years of study, uh, specializing in uh, biblical studies. And it's in that context, arriving in Rome in 1965, that I was You were right where able, the action was. <laughs> I was able to be right. at the Second Vatican Council. Yes. And uh, How appropriate. on the day, October 28th, 1965, Pope Paul VI created the, uh, promulgated the document on the church's relationship with the Jewish people. And so this uh, document, uh, which we call by the first two letters in, first two words in Latin, uh, Nostra Etate, uh, this document became the foundation for a, a creative work in developing Jewish-Christian relations uh, mm -hmm. for the Catholic Church. And so the uh, document tells uh, the Catholics how they are to appreciate their roots in the, in the biblical and the Jewish heritage and how we are together with the Jewish people searching for a deeper understanding of how to integrate God's word into our worship, into our prayer life, and into our moral decisions of everyday life. Mm -hmm. and, and how did our Jewish sisters and brothers receive you? Were you um, a curiosity in the best sense of the word um, because of your deep involvement? Well, in 1964 in Israel, uh, there were quite a number of priests and some Protestant students from Germany who had come to learn Hebrew for two months during the summer. Uh, uh, I stayed on for six months. And so, uh, so at the beginning, we had a number of priests uh, uh, in the immigrant school, and then most of them went back to Rome for their studies uh, in September, and I, I continued. So... I, uh, Must have been a wonderful time. It for was you. a yes. it was an interesting time, uh -huh. and uh, we had not only the studies uh, with the Jewish people who had come from various parts of the world, uh, but also I lived with the Jesuits, and uh, we had biblical studies of Hebrew and uh, a rhythm of prayer and so on that was mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. very helpful in that uh, mm -hmm. developing my. Uh, priesthood and understanding and how to and the hands use. And also, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. And then how did you basically arrive at Seton Hall oh. to become the chair of many committees? Okay. Uh, when I was in Rome studying, I was working with the, uh, an officer for Catholic Jewish relations, uh, Father Cornelius Reich, R-I-J-K is his Dutch name. Uh, Father Reich was the first officer for Catholic Jewish relations uh, in uh, the Holy See. And uh, Cardinal Bea, who was the great uh, leader under Pope John XXIII to formulate the background for this uh, document on the uh, church's relationship with the Jewish people, Cardinal Bea asked the Sisters of Sion to become uh, these uh, originators of a, a documentation center, and uh, they began a publication in Jewish-Christian relations, and it happened that uh, there were Canadian Sisters of Sion uh, in Rome at that time, as well as uh, those from England and France, who initiated this uh, documentary uh, service and a journal that uh, I helped to uh, work on in a certain way as a volunteer. Mm -hmm.